leverage what is available in the market. I prepared something that I'll just read from. Um, I think that first of all, I should say that funding, funding opportunities bound for all sorts of purposes. Um, but the responsibility, I think, is more on the entrepreneur to identify where they are at and what they need the financing for and what they are willing to put into that process. Um, so financing can be can either be um, debt financing or equity financing. Right, let me start from there. Um, normally, depending on the stage of business that you're at, either you're a startup or a growing business or an established business, um, the kind of funding you require would change per stage. Um, given those stages that I've, I've described, I don't know where you would want to place yourself. So let's just do a, like a test in the room. I don't want to be talking at us because it should just be a conversation. So if, you, if your business is at um, the seed stage where you just still have an idea, you haven't, you know, stay building customers, you haven't come out with any product or any offering. Is there any such person here? Okay, you're here. Okay, great. So the kind of financing you would need is different from the kind of financing that um, a startup business you need. So a startup business has, so you have um, a product or a value proposition that you are offering to the market already, and you have customers that are willing to um, place money down or exchange value for that thing that you are offering. Do we have any of such people here? Okay. So we have quite a number. So the kind of financing you need at that stage will also be different from what the startup will need. So I'll, I'll speak to those um, business stages. Then the next stage is when your business is growing. Um, <clears throat> your business is at the point where you are, you've, you've um, built a presence in the market. People recognize the offerings and, and the products that you have to deliver to them. Um, and you're having difficulty matching demand with supply. So that's at a scale up growing stage of business. Anybody here with that? Okay, great. Um, and then you have the established businesses where um, you've, pretty, you've, you've pretty much um, strengthen your framework, you, you, you have skill to expand your business, um, you've been able to expand your customer base, and you have a structure that you can, you know, just tweak and continue to grow and grow. Your um, income is stable, your demand is stable, your customer base is stable, and then you're looking at either selling the business or diversifying. Anyone here? Okay, not yet, but we're all getting there. Okay, so let me start with the startup. No, with the seed, with the seed stage. So with the seed stage, there are two people. Okay, what what business do you have in mind? The business I have in mind is rice processing. Okay. Rice milling processing. Okay. Rice processing. Who is the other the other person? Okay. The business I have in mind has to do with um, an artisan, an artisan uh, exchange platform. So if you're looking for an artisan, you can go over there and get one and recommend them as well. So that's like an artisan portal. So um, what kind of financing have you considered? Have you built the portal? I'm actually in a few accelerators right now. Fantastic. So I'm hoping that by the end of at least one of them, I'll get some financing to start something tangible. Great. So how about the... I'm sorry, I didn't ask for your name. Yes, my name is uh, Abraham Victor. Okay, Abraham, so what kind of financing have you considered? Uh, yes, uh, what I'm very concerned is that people 
against the machines that do anything in terms of rights process and which cause them a this I said, what I'm looking at is 3.5, that is what the cost of that machine. No, so what I'm saying is, what kind of financing have you considered? How are you planning to fund that idea? Okay. The kind of fund. How are you going to fund? Oh, okay, exactly. That is, that is where I'm looking at. What I have is not much that if I get a grant, then I'm able to push it. I'm glad. Um, Nobody in startup has talked about the loan, but we'll come back there. So the next stage of business was what that I described. Startup. Okay, who here is in the startup stage? Can, okay, can we get the mic to someone?
So I'll just, because of time, right, I'll quickly read what each of these are. Uh, what was the first one I mentioned? Bootstrapping. Bootstrapping. Okay, so this is when, this is when you have contributions from founding members of the business, right? And then you reinvest your profit. So bootstrapping is about using the resources that you already have to um, implement what is called your minimum viable product or minimum viable idea or offering. So you could have a novel idea, for instance, you want to feed how many families do you see? You want to feed the whole Nigeria. But so you then say, what is your minimum viable offering, which is the few hectares that you currently have? Yes, I said 30 hectares. Okay. No, that's to feed the whole Nigeria. But currently you have five. Yes. So that your five hectares is your minimum viable product, which you use to prove that you can feed the whole Nigeria. Okay. So that's what bootstrapping is about. Was that clear? No. It wasn't clear. So bootstrapping is currently I want to start a business. I have an idea. What I have is my book, my paper. Um, the money that I have in the bank, my savings, etc., and a friend who also has savings. So you put that money together and the resources that you currently have to start the business. If you are the only founder, you look inwards and say, what do I currently have? So typically you hear it as savings, family and friends, your social capital, your intellectual capital, what do you have now? Your, your, all the capital they have, what can you draw from each of those things to just start? Because entrepreneurs, um, entrepre real entrepreneurs, right, find the problem that they want to solve. So you can sit in your room and come up with all of the ideas that you want. But that's getting out of the house, getting out of the building. That step of getting out of the building and even offering something to the market is where the bootstrapping starts. Does that exactly? Yes. Okay. So this is using your own money, savings, family, friends, and fools. You can also get from your enemies if they offer you fools. Fools, right here. All right. Um, so what's the second one I mentioned? Your man. Okay. So some people may not be privileged to be able to also contributes to bootstrapping and Boma is back of mom and dad. <laughs> is anybody here that started business with Boma? No, please, let's check. Anybody? Right? Boma, yeah, mom and dad, right? Who else? I'm, I'm speaking well, to... They asked how much I had. Yes. How much I needed. Yes. So, I, I told yes, them yes, I told my father to start a business. Yeah. He said, how much do I need? Mm -hmm. how, much do I, how much do I have? So I told him how much I, I had, yeah. and he contributed his own part. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 still family. family. <laughs> but you know the difference between Boma and friends and fools and fools is that um, a friend has a higher stake, right? And is expecting the return very quickly and a repayment. To your mom and dad, you can explain. <laughs> and so I'm speaking to a few non-conventional things. You may not hear this everywhere, but I've been practical here, and I hope you appreciate that. Um, and I'm also speaking to this, especially because these are areas that a lot of people don't look to. So you want to start a business, you say, oh, I'm, I'm 28, I'm 22. I don't want to speak to my parents. And then you venture out and fall flat on the ground. When you have a, 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 a fallback that you should have drawn from. Also, remember what he talked about experiential capital, right? Okay. Um, crowdfunding. So, crowdfunding, I'll just read to you, is um, small contributions from a large number of people, right? So, this is also drawing on either your social capital or your reputation, which is why when he, talk, when he talked about um, personal branding, right? Personal branding draws from your character. You don't have, you can, if, you're, if you brand yourself so well and your character is fickle, 
strip, it will be easy to tell. It will be very flaky. There are people who have done everything about their brand, but because their character is faulty, even you will not trust it. Right? Okay, so if, for instance, um, I wish I, I had a better example. Um, Dangote says, okay, I want to raise funds for sugar supply, and I want youth between the ages of 18 and 22 to contribute to 2,000 naira. I just need um, 1,000 youth. How much is that? Can someone do the math for me? Okay, so I need 100,000 youth, which you can get, right? Okay, at 2,000 naira, that's how much? 200 million. That's a huge amount of money. But what's he drawing on? His character, his brand, right? Okay, so, yeah, his reputation. So crowdfunding, I beg your pardon? I said brand. Brand, yeah. Not character. Well, it depends on how you look at it. It depends on how much you look at it. Which is why, hold on, hold on. Let's, I don't want to split hairs here. Which is why I said I wish I had a better example. But so, um, let's leave it as what it is. You may know too much, but let's leave it as what it is. So, the brand. So it's right on this brand, so people will be drawn to that, right? And respond. So that's what crowdfunding is about. And we have a lot of that happening now, especially around agriculture, where you have um, pop money, you have, um, there's this one I saw the other day. Farm Crowdy, and they're doing really well. So you get, so they are, the, um, Farm Crowdy um, helps to get investors, right? People to bring monies together and then to help small scale farmers, correct? Yeah. Right? And those small scale farmers could have gone to a bank and have been declined a loan. Right? Okay. Um, so, grants. Do I need to talk about grants? Okay. Grants are monies that you get. There's no stake, no interest. It's, almost, it's literally a gift. But one of the things you should look out for when you're getting a grant. Are you listening? Yes. yes. Okay. One of the things you should look out for when you're getting a grant is what other form of support would you get from that relationship? So, a lot of people now are drawn to grants because um, of social responsibility, um, the, the growth of CSR, etc. Right? But when you're taking a grant, be careful not to take the one that will put you in trouble. And when I say put you in trouble, you may be taking on too much money at that time and you may run the business down. If you don't have the mentoring or technical support that comes with it. Experiential capital, very key. A lot of people overlook it. Look at that example he gave. The person got all the financing that he or she wanted. But what happened? There's no technical support. There's no tech so, I mean, if that person had asked at that point, okay, yeah, you're giving me this much money, right? But what other form of support can you offer? Do you want to be on my advisory board? Um, can I reach out to you for information? Can you link me up to someone who's done this before? That person, given the kind of money that he or she got, could have pretty much asked the invest investors if they could be linked to the Uber in Lagos, just to learn. Okay, so let's not be too, um, I don't use the word arrogant. Let, let's not feel like we know everything, especially when we're getting grants. Always seek information as well. Um, so incubators or accelerators, these are places that um, prepare you as a business, that help you nurture your ideas, and then send you into the market with funding and some form of um, other support. Then angel investors are high net worth individuals or groups that provide funding in return for equity. So that means they want a stake in your business. They are investing so that they can own a part of the business you're not paying them back in interest, you're paying them back from your profits, right? So when you're looking at um, the kind of financing you're getting as well, be able to determine what, you're, what kind of stake you want to put out there. Uh, I've talked about venture capital, okay? So venture, capital, venture capitals are privately managed investment funds that provide funding in exchange for equity. The difference between venture capital and angel investors is one is an organization, the other one is a group of individuals. I have quite a number of them. We have Lagos angel investors. Anybody ever heard of that? No. Hmm? Okay, so check them out online. 
You have Lagos Angel Investors. They bring individuals together to listen to businesses, and then um, these investors either stake their time or their money to build those businesses. Wow. Right? Um, which one is left? Loans. I've spoken about it. So venture capital is there is a um, is an organization, right, or an investment company that is looking to invest in exchange for equity. So they will take part of the ownership of your business. So at every point, so I mean, as a startup, as a seed business, as a seed enterprise, would you want to give out a stake of your business? So at that point, should you be looking for venture capital? Okay, but as an established business, would you want to give out, would you be more willing to give out a stake of your business? Yes. So you can get venture capital at that point. Right? Okay. Do you agree with me? Yes. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, so for, which, which one have I not spoken about? Okay, all except loans. Okay, so loans you get in exchange for I mean, you will pay with interest. You can get it from a bank, or you can get it from um, an informal organization, right? I would be careful with informal organizations, popularly known as low sharks, right? I would be careful because of the pricing that comes with it. So when you're shopping for loans, um, given what we know now, at this stage, should you get to take a loan? At seed stage, do you take a loan? So what's the best kind of financing at that point? Grants. 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 Yes? What are some percent interest? Sorry? Bomad grants. There are some zero interest uh, loans. Yes. Because uh, at the point, I don't know, it, should we call that this a grant? No. For this loan now, it's zero percent. So you have to pay Okay, if it is zero percent, zero percent interest rate, but you pay. Yes. So, so it's not no, it's not a loan. Where are you getting it from? Like uh, back of the industry, they do something like that. Zero interest, but you pay back. Half over a you pay. Yeah, so it's a loan. Yeah, it's a loan. For a branch, you don't pay back. For a loan, you pay back. But typically, with interest or with a fee attached to it, right? Is that clear? Yeah. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. So now that we understand the stages of business and the kind of financing, um, are you able to better match what kind of financing is required per business, per business stage? Yeah. Okay, so I was talking about loans, and that's where um, I'm going to sit on. So for loans, as a banker, Right. One of the things that we find is that a lot of businesses that come to the banks are either at the startup stage, right, or at the seed stage, right, and are therefore um, not ready for commercial funds, for commercial loans, because commercial loans are going to be based on your cash flow or based on your profits. What we find a lot of ent um, entrepreneurs do is that you, because of your turnover, right, you use your turnover as a point for assessing how much you think you should be able to get, which can get you into trouble. So a turn, your turnover is how much your business is turning over, including the cost of goods and all of that, plus your profit. So that's like your income, right? But when you take out your cost of um, goods or cost of sales, then you have your profits. So it is on your profit that you should be looking to borrow on. I don't know if you are getting my point. Okay. Then you also find businesses that either have not been registered. How many of us here have registered our businesses? Fantastic. Very impressive. Okay. So you also find that a lot of businesses are either not registered or are not keeping their books or don't have the structure to support um, or to draw the confidence of a lender. So if someone comes to borrow money from you and you're not clear on the purpose, you're not clear on the amount, you're not clear on your repayment source, would you, uh, or the person is not clear on all those three issues, would you lend to the person? No. So not those things. 
your um, business, how established, whether it's registered, because the bank is not going to lend to an individual, right? Um, the structure that you have in your business and your bookkeeping, because those are the things that a bank or a lender will look at to decide whether they are going to borrow, uh, lend you money or not. Exactly. Um, should I talk about the five C's of credit? No? I'll leave that to. Yes. I that's probably what you're going to talk about. Okay, so I'll leave that. You won't talk about it? The five C's. Okay. So he's going to go more into the technical bit of loans, right? Of financing. All right, I'll allow him to do that. I was hoping that I'll speak for 10 minutes, but obviously I've spoken longer, and I hope that you're able to pick something. I'll come back. Run through the five C's. Okay. All right. So for the five C's of credit, which is what banks um, will look out for, I'll still answer your question. But for the sake of time, I'll stop and allow him to speak. We'll take all the questions at the same time. So you have um, capacity, right? Your cap the capacity of the borrower to pay back. You have capital, right? How much you have put into the business. You have conditions. So what are the current conditions around your business? So for instance, um, yesterday at a meeting, um, we had some people from our credit list talking about how coronavirus um, is currently going to affect lending. And what he was saying was, if you have businesses that you have financed that are heavily dependent on imports from China, then you need to start looking at those businesses now so that they do not default. Because their raw materials are coming from there, and even what is happening in that part of the globe is probably going to impact on their business. Right? Yeah. So when I say conditions, you're looking at the current policies, regulations. So let's look at what currently happened with Gokada and what's the other one? Okay. And OP. Right? There were investments into those businesses. And I'm hoping they did not have loans. But if they borrowed from a prudent bank, one of the things that they would have looked at is the conditions. What are the policies currently in the place where they operate around the business that they are running? Is it, is it legal or is it illegal? Is there a likelihood that there will be a ban or not? Um, Okada has been banned many years ago, about a year and a half ago under Fashola, there's been different attempts to ban Okada. So that should have given anybody an idea about what may happen in the future, right? So when you look at the conditions around that business, you decide whether you're going to lend to them or not. Collateral. Four, collateral. So collateral is what you are able to stake. What is that thing that is dear to you, that I as a lender can hold? in exchange for the money that I'm giving to you. So that the day you say you're not paying, I'll say I want to collect this thing. I say, you know what, wait. Let me see how I can give you this money. Right? Collateral is that thing that is there to you, that you can stake for the money that you're borrowing. And that's what the lender will hold. Okay? I know we don't like to hear that part. <laughs> but there are lots of collateral free um, flexible collateral loans out there now. I'll share a, a, um, um, or some that we have at Access Bank after he speaks. So collateral. And then the last one, you know we keep talking about character. Character. As a matter of fact, of all the C's that I have described, the highest, most important, the one that carries the highest weight in a credit assessment is character. Because if the character of the borrower is poor, your money is not coming back. I don't know if you agree with me. Even if the person is making loads and loads of profit, that money is never because there will be an unwillingness to pay back. You no longer be capacity to pay back. It's unwillingness to pay back. The person is just a debtor that chooses not to pay back and doesn't care. Okay. And in terms of character, one of the things that has helped Nigerian banks right now is a credit bureau, where if you were to borrow from a bank today, we'll do a credit check on you. What are we checking for? Are you owing another bank? Once you are owing another bank, it's a no-no. That's the first thing that is done. 
There's also social character checks that don't on borrowers. You probably may not know that. But currently, with um, social media and all, newspapers, all of the, we'll go to Google and check you out. If your character is poor, you're unlikely to get that money. I'll give you an example. There was someone recently that um, applied for a loan. He was declined at the branch on the basis of turnover. And then he wrote to the, to the bank. And in speaking to the person, um, okay, so he, he wrote to the bank and then he was referred to me by my deputy MD. And then I called him, I called this um, customer up, you know, and he was like, I'm going to pull this bank down. I don't, you people are um, uh, calling the bluff of small businesses, etc., etc. You know, he spoke for a very long time, of course, he's my customer. So I was empathic, you know, trying to explain to him why what happened may have happened, but however, I'm going to look at it. So we looked at the case and I got his relationship managers and all involved and we discussed it, looked at everything. And then the relationship manager says, you know what, I'm going to make a case for this person. Will you give me an exceptional approval to at least loan him a million? Because from his um, assessment, he was going to he wasn't going to be able to get over more than 672,000 naira. And so he was going to seek exceptional approval to lend to this person, you know, um, at 1 million. So I said, okay, put it in, I'll approve it. And um, later on, the RM comes back to me and says, I'm not doing this loan again. And I said, why? He said, because this guy is going to blackmail us. We're not going to get our money back. I said, why? He said, I asked for additional statement so that I can assess the loan afresh. And then the customer says to me, you know what, I'm going to report you to CBN. Um, if you do not give me this money, I'm going to bring the bank down. Um, so he's saying stuff like, uh, you know, just went on and on, saying stuff like, this conversation, I'm recording it. I've recorded all your emails. You know, that kind of very aggressive. So he put the, the relationship manager, you know, on caution. It was a red flag because according to the relationship manager and I agreed with the person, right, if this customer defaults, how are you going to get your money back? Because all he's going to tell you is, I'm going to tell everybody on social media that you are trying to destroy my business, you are trying to destroy my family, what do you do? A decline letter was written to the customer. Why am I sharing this story? The fact that you are trying to borrow right, um, does not mean you should be, what? Aggressive, you know, I'm just trying, I'm actually speaking more to character, not aggressiveness, you know, sorry? Rude, well, I mean, as a customer, customer is king, you can afford to be rude, nobody will do anything about, do anything, people are, um, your service provider is unlikely to react, but my, um, I think it's more of character. Exploitative or the, the character, the red flag in an individual or a business owner, in the character of a business owner is very critical in a lending decision. I'm just trying to, you know, use that as an example for you to see why this person's loan was declined. So that it doesn't happen to anyone else. You just may not know. It may just be something you said about, you're talking to your relationship officer and you're saying, ah, I like this Boko Haram people. They are very determined. And you are asking for, you know, what do you think will happen? <laughs> you know, I just like their character, you know. When they decide to do something, they do it. They, they are focused. <laughs> no, but there, there are people who, who would say that, but it, it speaks to their character. You, you may say, oh, why should the bank be looking at that? Do you have your attention? You may say, why should the bank be looking at that? And what does it matter if my business is doing well and all of that? But hey, you go for a visa interview and based on something you wrote on social media, it's declined. Why? It's character. So that's key. Let me stop there so that I can continue for two hours.